Welcome to another session and episode of the Business Conversation, AgriBiz. That's what we are all about every day, 8 to 5, 8 to 8, 8 to 9. That's what we do. I'm Odipo G, and uh, as always with me, Kanyarati and Abayo. Today we are looking at something that's fairly interesting in my, in my opinion. Uh, we've mentioned it in the subsequent shows when we did avocado, when we did rosemary, we touched on it and we thought, hey, this one can actually be an entity on its own. We're going to look at the opportunities available in the drying value chain for fruits and vegetables. Because one of the things that we have a lot of is post-harvest losses. We, that, that's, that's too much. It's too much. Every single season, whenever there is an excess of something, literally every single season, there is always waste. And that waste can be, can be monetized. And it can be monetized greatly. And that's why we'll just touch on it, look into how we can be able to look into the market, what does the market look like, the difference between a market and a sector, you know, uh, because the biggest headache when it comes to, or one of the biggest headaches when it comes to selling, it's always, or rather agribusiness, it's always market, it's always market. So we'll touch on that at some given point, and we'll see how, how we go from there, and what we can be able to learn exactly from the opportunities available in the value chain when it comes to drying. So gentlemen, karibu sana, kanyarati, nik, good to have you guys, good to have you guys around. Um, we have We have noted, like, when this was about four months ago, when there were no tomatoes in the market, and then as the Empesa syndrome goes or the quail system goes, everyone four months ago planted tomatoes, and the other day we saw people literally begging people to buy tomatoes at because at, they created a glut. Because they created a glut, you know, and there was a lot of waste, a lot. you know, and this happens with every single season, religiously. We, we never fail, whenever when it comes to, to such. As good as tomorrow going to be day. Same, same. Same, same. So I just, I, I just sat down and, 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 and thought, hey, can something be done? You know, something can be done. Because when you dehydrate things, the way we, we, we have been dehydrating our products, we realize that the only thing that you remove is the moisture content. But the nutritional value it remains the same. Same, same. Mm. Same, 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 same. Completely. And some products you can be able to rehydrate yes. by just soaking them in water for a few minutes. Yes. And it goes back to A1. True. You know? So I wanted us to look at some of the some of the um, African leafy vegetables, you know, from the kundes to the tereres to the managus to the saga, you know, and then we also touch on mango because season is coming. Mm -hmm. uh, it's already season is, uh, slowly. It's, it's time, August, October is coming yes, soon. You need In to, the season, you kamba. Yes, you need to be <laughs> nice to the kambas. You need to be, nice, to be nice to your kamba friends because the season is coming. And and as, as Kanyarati has said, as tomorrow is going to be day, there is going to be an excess. There is going to be a glut, yes. Mm -hmm. So it's very good for people to start thinking of what to do, mm -hmm. you know, in, in that particular, when, when that particular season comes. Mm. So, what, 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 what have you guys seen in relation to the opportunities available in the drying, One, in the drying uh, value chain? Let's start with what has been in excess. Huh? We, let's look at examples that are of what you've seen in the past few days. There's a tomato blood, okay? Which means somebody never thought ahead. If we had dried that tomato, by now we'll be cooking with tomato paste. Because you just add some bit of water and it's paste. Then, uh, if you look at the African leafy vegetables, kina, terere, kunde, and all that, how we consume them is when is on very tiny bits and pieces. Okay, so you can take like the managus and all that, dry and crush. Okay, keep it for some time. Then, when you want to take it, when you want to eat, just put water boil. You have, you have, because we, they're all boiled <laughs> either way. Yeah. So we, we just boil it and, and you're done. See, so these things, 
The moment you do that, what you're just doing is increasing the shelf life of this product. Yeah, you can actually increase the shelf life for mm. for, for, for leaves. Yeah. Up to up to six months. Yeah. Up to actually six yeah. months. And the cycle of actually producing uh, these veggies is like three months. Mm. You yeah. see? So when it's not there, when these guys are waiting for the harvest, you have yours. Yes. So you can you, you can you can sell it. Yes. You see. And then uh, the other thing I, I was saying is if you look at what people take as a uh, coffee what has happened it's been dried and crushed yes the granules yeah see chocolate the same the same same thing so because these are cocoa this is a cocoa plant mm -hmm. that has gone through the process and become and become a uh, coffee it, 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 i think even one product i think all of us can relate to it it's just tea yeah tea leaves yeah tea yeah, yeah. yeah. we call them tea leaves yet they are brown yes. it's yeah. actually brown <laughs> yeah they come green they, they're dried through the normal drying process of dehydrating the water. It's crushed. And what do you have? You have tea leaves. Tea leaves. And Anna, I think you mentioned tea leaves. I just remembered there's something, that, um, there's something that I came across called white tea. Now, white tea is made from the tea leaves that are very tender and young. Very young, very young leaves. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's painfully expensive. But it's called white tea. It actually produces a clear tea. So it's like, it's like, when you look at it, it looks like water, but it has the flavor and the aroma, you know, so yeah, so, so people who love tea are into that. Interesting enough, I had it when I was doing my research in terms of drying and how it looks like, it, it, just, it just popped up you know, on one of the YouTube videos and I thought, I've actually never had of white tea, yeah, white tea. You know, and and never, never have I. Yeah. Uh, if you say it's a premium product, yes. it means it's it has its own uh, niche, yes. niche market. Yeah. Though you know, when you think about it, when it comes to producing tea, we are world, we are world yeah. renowned. Yeah, we are world, and also we are even the quality is exceptional. Quality, yes. Exceptional. Now, I want you to look at you go walk into a supermarket. When you look at the shelf, just that place for teas, we can go. We can talk about it. For, they are so yes. chamomile, yes. Uh -huh. flavored teas, you green teas, teas, green teas strawberry, up whole. Yeah. All those are teas yes. that have been dried. Yes. yes, they have been blended. And, 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 that, and that's why even one of the things where you know you can, you can, you can actually have mango flavored tea. You can, they are there. Just by drying. Mm -hmm. You dry the mango, you dry the tea, and blend it. you blend the two, you know, and um, have a value you put them in uh, tea bags, mm -hmm. you know. And interesting enough, these things are not, they're not rocket science. No. Like the other day, um, I met, I have met this organization called IBAFOSA. It's actually an acronym. Mm -hmm. E, then BAFOSA, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they don't, you, they, I see them active mostly on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Very active on Twitter. So they help farmers when it comes to value addition. And they do, they help farmers get dryers, miniature dryers, mm -hmm. small homemade dryers, you know. The effectiveness of those dryers is beautiful. And just polythene, glass, uh, wood, air yeah, reflective material, it's very, very simple. But the efficiency and the effectiveness it has, mm -hmm. it's outstanding. Reason being is we have an abundance of sun. Generally, that, that one we always have an abundance yeah. of sun. So drying these things is not very hard. Yeah. And then leaves don't have thick mo I mean, don't have a lot of moisture unless you're drying cactus leaves or something, yeah. <laughs> you know. But the normal leaves that we have, they do very well, you know. I've seen I've seen maize package, mm -hmm. uh, these African leafy vegetables. So it's something that actually works, you know. So when you ask yourself, people dry, people dry because um, they want to increase the shelf life, you know, but also people people dry because they do not want to to incur losses yeah. So this is just another I, I think like uh, a biocida mm -hmm. like, yeah, I think bottom line when it comes to this process what we are saying is that we want to help each person extend their ability to hit the market even when you don't think you have products in the market because once you've got, done the necessary processing of drying, 
decently packaging it, yes. it means you have pushed yourself into another market. You have increased the value of your product to another level. Yes. You have made sure that now, even as you speak, you are telling guys, my product has no short-term shelf life yes. because that's one of the biggest challenges we have. Yes. Now, if you look at, a, I think also we need to look a little at why we are talking about this product today. I think you made it quite clear that the challenge you have is waste, mm. truly. And we have mentioned uh, tomatoes. We have also talked about uh, even vegetables. You go even further, fruits, it's even worse. Mm. At least I uh, think the usual vegetables are quite more easily adaptable. Yeah. But no, this is a bulky product. Yeah. It takes a lot more to get it even together, transporting it, getting buyers. I'll give you an example. Yesterday, the day before I had a person in Machakos, he's a good friend. The usual, we got, he has pixie oranges, he had pixie oh. oranges, yes, uh, like two truckloads of canters, he called them canters. Oh. Then he had uh, lemons, and he had, um, what, there's one more product called, uh, no, that's um, not, not lemons, what do you call the small one? Lime. Lime. So all three. Wow. He was actually looking for wow. someone to buy. Not long ago, yes, and today he has sent me the power of social media. Yeah. Someone collected it. He's told just, I just read it right here. Mm. So what we are saying is this. He needs to give you a commission. The struggle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, the struggle yes. of getting, trying to get things done is real. Mm. He has a product and he's asking himself, what, what do I do? And he's thinking, time. Yes. Mm. Time means they'll go bad. Or time means he'll get, he won't get a good price. Yeah. Yeah. Time means that... Uh, he'll not get a good return. No, I mean, it's a whole combination of things. The longer he stays all, with them. Yes, and after all that work. Can you imagine if this guy had said, you know what, I'm going to do lime. How many, like in this season, when we're talking about uh, COVID season, lime. lime and lemon, yes. without even thinking. Yes, yes. How much, and you know, you can get all the way to the, to the, to the, the skin. Yes. And it's, yes. it's, a, it's so medicinal. It is. So, are you seeing what we are discussing here? Eh? And it's a simple product which is there in the market. And drying it, funny enough, it's, it's easier to dry than even to plant. Because with the, it's just that now that June, July has been there, so the sun has not been out quite um, as it's supposed to, or rather as, as normally. But, but with the makeshift dryer, like for instance, at the farm, we, we did not buy a dryer. We literally made one from an old greenhouse. You know, we just made makeshift to dry it out. And we started drying rosemary and we started drying chili. They are bone dry. No. Bone dry. You might think they have been dried in a machine. Which is very interesting and it's something that we just made from the YouTube videos we saw and whatnot. Oh, you, you, you put a mesh here. Oh, okay. So it needs to be aerated. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, good, good. It needs to have this kind of polythene. Ah, okay, okay, good. Inside it needs to be like a sauna. Yes, yes, yes. That was just it. And we actually, we actually made one. You know, so it's not rocket science at all or brain surgery or, you know, to, to do that. Okay, yeah. mm. What is the most consumed product on a Kenyan table? Skumawiki and ugali. 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 What is ugali? How do you get maize. ugali? Just maize. It's a maize. Take maize, mm. dry it, yes. crush, mm. sell. Mm. Sell. Mm. But you see, we, we won't look at it that way. It, that's exactly what we are talking about okay mm -hmm. a packet of unga can stay in a supermarket shelf mm. for like a month okay mm -hmm. but your maize at home the way it is just after you picked it will go bad mm. in that same month yeah, okay. okay but if you look at it what what farmers need to do is uh, pick their area. Pick their area in terms of? Pick their niche market. Okay. I am a farmer, I have maize. Okay? There is that person who wants to eat kitheri. Let him be sorted. Then there is that person who wants to eat ugali. Let him be sorted. That way, I reduce the number of rejects in my farm and increase uh, my, my profit. Because I would have consumed literally 90% of the produce I get from my farm. Okay? And by agricultural uh, mathematics, 
that person has probably hit a profit of or a gross margin of 60%. Give or take, which is a lot. You know, when you, when you, when you talk about um, why don't people do it, I, I came across two reasons why, or rather, yeah, three. I came across three interesting reasons why people don't necessarily engage in value addition. Um, one of them is the whole aspect of culture, which we keep talking about in every single show. Yes. Like, for instance, your friend has done agriculture very well and produced all those tonnages of fruit. You see, he never thought of the market. He the never thought product. of the exact. It ended there. It ended there. Now you see, someone like, someone like me, I would approach your friend and tell him, I want all your products. He'll probably sell to me, uh, let's, let's, estimate at, at, let, let's estimate at 50 per kg. Okay? You said a canter. So I have 20 tons. Let me say 20 ton canter. Um, it gives me, yeah, it gives me 20, 20 tons of fruit. Yes. Okay? I dry this fruit. I'll probably get five tons. Yeah. When, I, when I bone yeah. dried, you know, I'll yeah. probably get five tons. I'll lose quite a bit of it. It's you just know? the wheat, just the water. Yes. You're just losing, You're just losing yes. You know, all I need to do, um, from when, when it's dry, crushing it is very easy. Yeah. You know, crushing it is also very easy. So I crush this thing, everything plus lemon, plus the, the, the leaves, you know I mean, not the leaves, the, skin. the, the skin, yeah, the skin, the seeds, and everything, and I have, I have lime. It's now one of the best seasons to sell such stuff. In fact, for the rest of the year, actually. Mm -hmm. you know? Even next year. Yeah, even next year, even a better part of next year. So we have about eight to nine months of a window where we can be able to sell what do you call them? Call them uh, flu friendly. But Odipo, Organic. as you say these, uh, mm. I remember you and I sat down around December. Mm. Last, year. Last year, December. And I told you, you are in the best position to produce your own dawa. Mm -hmm. The lime, yeah. ginger, and what? Yes. And is, it's lime and ginger, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dawa. We call it dawa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. dawa. You were, you were in the best position yes. at that time yes. to create it. Yes. Because you had a dryer, yes. you had ginger, yes. and you could have accessed lime. And lemon. Okay? Lemon. And lemon. Mm -hmm. Or either or. Yes. You see, so what you'll do, considering that you're good in the drying, in the drying industry, now imagine selling to guys something that I just carry to the office in a sachet, and I put hot water in a cup and a drop of honey, what do I have? Yes. Boss, you need to do that. Yeah. Then Kanyarachi will sell it. <laughs> I'll be the banker. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll think, we'll, we'll consult about the banking, but it's all right. I agree that, with you. That, 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 but that's how, we, that's how people should think. That's how people should think. It, when it comes to people thinking now, um, it touches on, on the aspect of market yes. <clears throat> that, um, that, that, that I'll touch on after. Um, when you look at the reasons, we're talking about the reasons as to why people don't dry. It's the aspect of culture, you know, where your thinking ends when I've produced the goods, yeah. you know. Um, the business side of it all will be thinking, what season is it? Uh, learning how to design and read the times. You know, what season is it? I have, a, I have a chance here to sell this thing at a greater value. Because for every, for give or take, there's a profit margin of between 200 and 250 percent. When, when you when you when you do the whole when you play around with the whole value add you can always you can always make quite a bit of quite a bit of change you know when it comes to just learning how to do the processes which is very very simple you know that was one then secondly I came to realize that people are just lazy no 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 there are some people wait let me wait, wait. let me qualify let me qualify let me qualify. The farmer is not lazy. I'm not talking about the farmer. Listen. I, no, no, I haven't said. I haven't said the farmer is lazy. Mm -hmm. I said people are just lazy. We have some people who... Farmers are animals. Are honestly, are honestly just lazy in terms of laid back in comfort zone. They do not want, they do not want the hassle, as they call it, of value addition. Yeah. They usually say, I leave that hassle to Kanyarati, to Abayo, to Odipa, leave that hassle, you know, to them, they are comfortable where they are. That's what I'm calling lazy. 
They're not comfortable. Uh, why don't we say a comfort zone? Actually, they're, they're comfort not zone. in a comfort zone. Looks, they're in a comfort zone. She looks no, to me. I, I'll, I'll put it this way. These guys are not oh, in a comfort so what zone. You want to be These guys, as I've said, are not honest. <laughs> These guys have discovered their niche. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay? There's somebody whose duty is to make the body of a car. There's another one who will make the tire. I agree. Thank you. This guy has already given you the produce. Mm -hmm. It is now you who thinks you are in that space to come pick it and now create something. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's what I'm saying. The, farm, the guy is not lazy. The guy just feels his energy has been so consumed with production that value addition is not his thing. Now I'm talking about the, that, that's one guy. Yeah. I'm talking about the lazy guy. Okay, who is this lazy, this, this lazy guy? Please that lazy guy. This lazy, lazy guy. You are, you're making us sound like... Uh, this lazy guy uh -huh. is a very close relative to an uh, ignorant guy. Okay? Because ignorance plays a role also when it comes to people not doing value addition. In this sense, people have access yes. to information. People have access to one or two, three, four, five places. Mm -hmm. You know? But their laid-back mentality and their pessimism causes them not to advance to a place where they can actually generate more revenue. The only reason, the people I'm talking about who are lazy and arrogant are the people who have access to all these things, but the only reason they're not doing it is because they're just lethargic. They're just, you, you know, we, you, you, you do know we have lazy people on earth. No, you can go on. Okay. Listen, listen, this one, I think we are going to we yes. end up having a debate about lazy, <laughs> not lazy. Mm. Uh, let, let's do this. I think bottom line is, I keep telling you, guys, where are we coming from when we are talking about processing? You, you guys take for granted history and how it has driven us to where we are today. Apart from milk, Tell me which other product which guys have taken seriously in whatever small way and a lot is happening. There's still a lot of waste. Just milk. But do you know what? We, last year and this year, we were producing so much milk, most of it is actually was constituted to what? To powder. Mm -hmm. It's just the process. Mm -hmm. And then what? They can keep it for a year. When yeah. in January, God willing, in February, when you know that season is coming, they will reconstitute it, just add water and flush it back. They'll pack it, and it'll be that make a packet of milk. Apart from any other, tell me which other industry where, like I talked, I talked about coffee those days. Who was, coffee was for who? For the rich Muzungu mm -hmm. or the colonial. All he did was, all you are told was, you dig here to there. Don't do anything else. You, you can pick these cherries that are red, don't pick any. He was not given any idea of how to move beyond that point. At, at, then there was a guy whose work was at the milling place where it happened. Then there was a, after that, they didn't see anything. Coffee disappeared. It, the, the press, so for them, what they know is, kahawa ikifika hapa, mambo yako inaishi hapo. So you need to understand that the laziness is come, I would rather you say ignorance. <laughs> because ignorance creates the ability to understand that without the knowledge, my people perish. I think this is the part we keep talking about. That guy has no understanding of beyond this space. Who has educated him? You go to our schools. We, you, uh, I never really did agriculture. You guys probably did agriculture. Never. But even the agriculture, that was it done? I kept asking, which single school produces and satisfies its own needs for vegetables? Not even any other product. I don't know. I haven't met one. So, yet most of them have the land. But, so, you need to understand historical. So, that's on our side. Yeah. So, meanwhile, what we are saying is this. People need to be educated. Like that, my guy needs to be, I need to talk. Now, I'm going to, him, I'm going to, I told him, you know what, we need to have a conversation. Yes. He said, let's talk. The thing is, he needs to understand that he can't be waiting, producing and then waiting for people to come to him. Yes. We said, we said, we said he needs to start from where he needs to take it. Exactly. Okay, so that next season... What, what you need to do is to tell this guy there's market for your produce. The market is Odipo, Nick, Kanyarati. Yes. Go to these guys, mm -hmm. get with samples of probably, not even with samples, just get to know what they want. Mm -hmm. Okay, they'll tell you, we want tangerines, we want lime, mm -hmm. we want lemon. Mm -hmm. These are things that you have on your farm. Mm -hmm. 
so you you know the next season once it is harvest time you harvest a few take samples to them come with your order and you're good to go can can do we have i need to look into this do we have someone doing white label in kenya what what white label white label is is for instance your friend yes uh who has lemon lime and pixies yes mm-hmm. all those are different flavors different products yes. and you can create a fourth one by blending all of them mm-hmm. you know so let's or say even to another piece or even, or yes two exactly the other one. so your friend ideally has six products yes ideally mm-hmm. okay white label is where um he powders them he dries them and powders them mm-hmm. so he has powdered six of his products mm-hmm. okay <clears throat> and then he sells them under someone else's brand you remember how you remember how um eldorado express used to do franchising, franchising. Mm. yeah you bring your bus yes we brand it yes. and we have a bus called exactly. eldorado express yeah. so he does something like that for instance our for, let me use our brand 1516 mm. our brand 1516 so he comes to us and tells us i have product you guys have a brand okay so i'm going to package my product inside your brand mm-hmm. you understand and then we have a profit sharing marginal agreement instead of him selling the product to 1516 you, you get the difference he becomes like a shareholder because most of the time where where people have have have, have a challenge you'll find someone has dried yes drying is easy the sun is there making that drying structure is not is not the dry is not very challenging okay Uh, then they'll tell you okay I'll crush it you know but now where do I start in terms of packaging online marketing what not and all that stuff one of the things that has helped us is that what do you call strategic partnerships yeah where someone like 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 for us I, I, and I keep mentioning it over and over again it's not that we own the equipment that we use we actually don't own any of the equipment that we use mm-hmm. but we have partnered up strategically with people who we can symbiotically exchange okay so a, a, a friend like yours comes to people like us who have the the brand okay people like us will probably approach someone like Nick who has the marketing know how you see so you become the consolidator for instance and you work with your friend to produce the powder okay you bring it to us we package it in 1516 The quality is nice we have cabs we have nini and all that stuff okay and then we give nick a finished product because nick is not into producing exactly. he wants packaging market. he wants to market so we give him a product to market 